Hi everybody, Joe Carswell here with another build video. This build project is one that I think you're going to like. It's a Lowe's DIY build project, a shutter build. So let's go ahead and get into it. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learn something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. The beauty of this project is all of the simple basic skills we've learned can now be used to assemble this uh, shutter project. We have to make them in pairs. We're always thinking about aesthetics here. These are ornamental shutters that will go on a residence. They need to look good. This comes into play with our measurements, have to be accurate, our use of tools, control of those tools, understanding the materials we're working with and the fasteners we're working with. Let's cover all the tools we need to get this project done. Starting with our trusty tape measure, we will need a pencil, a small speed square. This is a six inch speed square. Also a larger square would really help out with this project. This is called a framing square and this will help us in uh, laying out and making all those parts organized accurately. Also, we need a cordless drill to drive our fasteners. We also need some type of tool to cut our materials to length. That could be a handsaw. That's a perfect uh, option for this. If you want to go with power tools, you could use a circular saw. My recommendation to you is to use, if you have it, a miter saw and you will get a much accurate, a much more accurate result on all of these pieces. Uh, also, one other tool that I will be using in my assembly of this project will be a brad nailer. I'll use an 18 gauge brad nailer and I'll need a compressor to drive that gun. All of the tools I've just mentioned, we have available to you videos that will teach you how to use those tools. I'll put those links down below, so make sure you check those out. So let's get into a little more about the materials. The plans call out for a pine or a cedar slat or cedar one by material. We've chosen cedar for this project and it's typical for cedar to come milled with a rough face and a smooth face. This gives you as the builder a decision to make which side is will be showing in the, in the finished product. Is it going to be the smooth side or will it be the rough side? And it will give it a completely different look what you don't want to do is to mix and match. That's probably not a great idea unless that is your plan or your design. These are some small choices you get to make within this plan set. Also, our slats or our uh, cleats, I'll call them, we will make them a little more fancier than the plans call out. We, we're going to chamfer all these edges a little bit. It's going to give it a little bit more of a finished look and we will be able to use our table saw to make that happen. Speaking of a table saw, I used that tool when we were pre-cutting these parts for our uh, shutters. We made our own one by twos. I call it a one by two. The plans call this out as a three quarter by one and a half. They're calling out the actual measurements. When I say a one by two, that's what the lumber yard would consider this particular piece of material. If you are not ripping your own pieces, remember when you go into Lowe's, Home Depot, or the lumber yard, you're asking for this piece as a one by two. This piece here would be a one by four. And it's interesting, the thickness of this cedar material is actually, uh, most one by is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. This is 13 sixteenths, so it's a sixteenth thicker than what I would uh, commonly call a one by. I believe that is because of this. It's only milled smooth on one side. So the sixteenth of the inch that would come off of the rough side has not been taken off. This will make a stronger board and keep it straighter in the end. So if you notice on the plans, our one by four is not only the slats on either end of the shutter, but also our cleat material. And the center board is wider. This one is a one by six. So my one by six, the plans call it out in its actual dimensions. This would be three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches. And let's check that exactly five and a half. So this piece is milled to what I would consider a true one by six. All of these boards I mentioned were pre-cut. I used my favorite tool, which is a miter saw. 
the accuracy you can achieve with that tool is unlike any other, and I would recommend that as your first choice if you have one. Let's go over this cut list. It's at the top of the plans here. It's giving us four different parts. That's A, B, C, and D. And what's called out here, they're giving each part a name so we understand either it's center slat, narrow slat, or side slats, or cleats. We need to understand where those are on this shutter and where to place them. It's also calling out the finished dimensions. For instance, part A is gonna be three quarters by five and a half. That's our center slat. It's not calling out the length of any of these parts. The reason for that is you have to measure the space or place that these shutters are going, and a lot of it is determined by the height of that window. So you now have to measure in the field your window, transfer that measurement to all the lengths of these slats. The other thing that's listed in this material list is the number of parts and pieces. You can assemble a material list that you can then go purchase all of these materials based on this count. Make sure when you're adding up all of your materials for a complete list, you're taking into account the length or height of the window, and you're making sure that you get the right length of boards to cut all of those parts out without a whole lot of waste. You can spend a whole lot of money with having a whole lot of scraps left over that can't be used for the project. Phase one of this project is laying all of this out. I pre-cut all of my pieces to an exact length. I have eight parts, and according to the plans, I've got them all cut. I measure to my window. You need to measure to your window specifically. Make sure that they will fit. And we've also done a little fancy edge on our cleats here. I've cut a 30 de degree angle all the way around on all four sides. When you look at this from the front, it will add a little detail to it. All of the other parts are squared on all of the edges. So the next step will be placing these parts where they need to go. According to these plans, my wide slat, which is this one by six, will end up in the middle. So then uh, on either side of th that piece will be my one by twos. And we want to make sure that our smooth side is up, at least on my shutter. If you want the rough side up, make sure that all of the sides are matching. On the very outside, this will be my 1x4 slats. So that is the general layout of the shutter. Next up, we need to add spaces between these shutters. And the plans call out for a half inch dowel. I am going to use a half inch material that I had laying around. This is half inch drywall, easy to cut. I made small pieces and these will fit in between the space in each slat so that we can gain the proper distance between them or gap between them. And that will set our cleats at the edge. This gives us our true width of our shutter and we can measure that at the end. And these don't need to be all the way on the ends and they don't need to be too close to the center. So somewhere in the middle, we definitely don't want them in the way of our cleats when we go ahead and place those cleats. And I'm calling them cleats. That's our part that's coming across that's going to hold all of these together. So at this point, that's my general layout. We need to get very accurate and specific about this. I'll use my framing square to help align all of these edges. What I'm looking for here is a perfect rectangle made out of all of these different parts. All of these ends need to line up. If we go ahead and nail this together uh, without doing this, we can have a shutter that will look out of square or really messy. So I'll take my framing square here and I will lay it up against this edge of this board. And now I can align all of my ends so that they touch this, the edge of this tool. If they're short, if I have a gap, I'll pull them tighter. And if there's an overlap, I'll pull them back. So what I want is a total uh, contact with all of these edges all the way around. That tells me that this edge is square, even though it's made up of all these different parts. We need to double check that on the other side. So let me make some room over here. And we'll do the same thing. I'll lay it in here and make sure it's touching that board. And I've got pretty good contact all the way across on all these pieces. So at this point, we can't be juggling this around or moving it too much. We want it to stay exactly in that place. The next step is aligning our cleats. And on our plans, 
it calls for the top and bottom cleats. Well, it calls for three cleats, one exactly in the middle, one at the very top and one at the bottom. The top and bottom cleats need to be down or they need to be placed below the top edge of these slats by two inches. So the easiest way for me to do that would be to take a speed square and a tape measure and my pencil and make a mark at two inches down from either end. So I have two inches there and then I'll make a mark here at two inches. And that is the edge of my cleat. And we can actually, we can use a speed square to set that, or we could also use our framing square. That would work fine too. That is my line that I want for that cleat. And this is my line for this cleat. And now we can lay that cleat in place, the top and the bottom one. It, it will line up with this edge. We're going to flush it out with that edge. I've laid it on that line. Now I know it's two inches from the end. And at this point, our square can help us decide if this cleat is 90 degrees to the outside edges. That's the second reason for this framing square. So as I lay it in here on this edge, I need to line that cleat up so that there's contact with this edge all the way across. I've got this at a little bit of an angle, so I'm touching the side of my shutter and I'm also meeting that cleat. And I've got a pretty good line there. I need to make sure that I'm still on my two inch line. And I am. So without moving that, we'll call that good. We're going to do the same thing down here. Full contact with the side and then a little bit of adjustment on the cleat. I'm squared up, so we're good there. So that's my top and bottom cleat. The third cleat goes right in the center. And uh, centering things is a, something you're going to do constantly in construction and carpentry. There's no point in trying to figure the math of the center of this board and then figure to one side and then try to do the math. The easiest thing is to find the center of the shutter and then find the center of the board, make a mark and then line those marks up. That way you're only measuring one point, not one side or two points and you're not adding so much math. So the total length of, or height of these shutters is 45 and a half. So the center of 45 and a half, 22 and three quarters, that gives me my center. I need it on this outside edge here and I'll do it on your side so the camera can see it. So I'll do 22 and three quarters. That would be right here. So we will use that mark and line it up with the center of our board. At this point, we need the center of this cleat. And my cleat is three and a half. So I'll make a mark at one and three quarters, which is the center. And I'll make a mark on your end as well, just so you can see it lined up. That would be right there. So those marks, so I've made a mark here that I need to line up with this mark. And as you can see there, those two marks get lined up. That tells me that this cleat is centered in this shutter. At this point, we have all of our slats laid with our half inch spacers. We have our end squared up. We have our cleats uh, two inches in, the top and the bottom cleat two inches in from the edges. And we also have a centered cleat and everything is square. So next, we're going to make some marks on all of these parts so that we don't lose our positions. And the reason why I'm marking them is because we have to pull all these parts up, add glue, and then add some brad nails to hold it together. So now I'll know by these marks exactly where my glue goes and I won't have any wasted or messy glue spots. So with all those marked, we will then pull the cleats off, add the glue, and then we'll pull out a brad gun and nail all, all of this together. The plans also call for screws. That is a perfectly good option. And screws typically hold better than nails, but at the point that we're using glue, I feel like that's the strength of this build. So the nails are just there long enough for that glue to set. This is an all weather glue. It'll work great outside. So at this point, 
I'll flip these over and we can add our glue and then nail all this together. You never want to add your glue to your cleat because all of your gaps will uh, take the glue and then it will spill out into your gaps. The glue will only go onto your slat faces or your uh, these uh, vertical faces where I've marked. This is called Ultimate Wood Glue. This is Tight Bond 3. I use this for everything. It's good for in interior or exterior work and it's weatherproof. So this is a fairly strong, it's a phenolic resin glue, which means that it uh, sets very quickly too. So this in an hour will be pretty much good to go to start priming or painting. And you can nail these down one at a time or get all your glue, get them down and then nail them all at once. I am going to do one more check of my square uh, as I go. And that's just the way I roll. I don't believe in uh, uh, assuming anything or taking any chances with that. And once you nail it down, it's permanent. So uh, we will also spread this glue out so that it has an even coat. And I'll do that with just a finger. My uh, brads will be an 18 gauge brad. And if you do it with a pneumatic nailer, like I'm doing it, or any nails or fasteners for that matter, make sure that you pick a length that will not come out the back of the uh, both layers. So you have three quarters and three quarters. That's an inch and a half. I'm using an inch and a quarter brad. So that will stop short of coming out of the end of any of these boards. So I did a pretty good job of not moving my parts around. I think when we do a final square check before we nail this together, I think we'll be in good shape. So we're ready to place these cleats. I have my marks that I can follow and I'm going to reference my center lines as well, just to make sure that I have everything where I want it. That line is lined up and I have flush edges on both of those cleats or both of those ends of the cleat. This one follows that line. And then this one will follow this line over here. And make sure that I've got that centered. Shift a little bit. Now let's check for square one more time before we nail this together. So that looks good. That end looks good. Let's check the cleat. We've got a nice square condition going on there. We'll check this end here. It looks good. So this glue, believe it or not, as soon as you start to put these pieces together, starts to set up. So we're ready to put our brads in. I'm going to fire in four brads for the large, the wider boards and then two brads for the, the narrower boards, making sure that nothing's moving around while I'm doing this. So I'm adding pressure and then I can go ahead and nail these. So placement of your nails is not so critical. We will fill these and paint them when we're all done. A small brad is ideal. If you're wondering about brad placement, I'm coming close to the edge. You want them as far apart as possible without splitting the wood or coming out of the side. Now we have our slats laid out, our glue is between the boards, and now we have all of our brads in place. We don't want to move this at this point. We really want that glue to set. So it, we can pull these spacers out of here. They're not doing us any good anymore. And also while I'm pulling these spacers, let me tell you, keep in mind that there are knots in, especially if you use cedar, there's a lot of small knots. Keep your brads out of those knots. They won't go through. I actually have one nail here that I hit a knot that's on the back of the board or, the, or under the board. So I'll have to drive that in with a nail set uh, before I can finish this shutter out. Well, that's one shutter down. This is sat overnight. The glue's all set up. It's nice and solid. And I added some fasteners on the back for some extra strength. 
These won't show like the ones in the drawing, but they give us that uh, strength of screws that we didn't have before. Remember, if you're using screws and you're uh, using them for this purpose, make sure that you don't choose one that's so long that it's going to come out and show on the front. This is an inch and a quarter screw, which works great for two three quarter boards laminated together. It's time to make a shutter to match this one. And once I've got them both built, I need to finish them out. That's going to require primer on this shutter. I'll also need to spackle all of my brad holes and I need to sand that out. I'll probably add some caulk on some of these joints between the horizontal and vertical pieces. And then I can add a top coat to make these look really good. Remember, this is an ornamental thing that goes on the front of the house to be seen. So we want them to look great. I hope you've enjoyed this project and understand that it takes some simple skills, but if you take your time and you're careful with it, this can be a great improvement to a home. So thanks for watching and good luck. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.